Hey, um, sorry I didn't do six, seven, and eight of um Passover a time for redemption. I haven't felt good the last three days. So I'm gonna try to get comfortable and get into the frame. So I'm gonna finish up Passover a um time for redemption. Let me get to chapter six. I know the chapters aren't really long. The Passover seated contains many pigment tradition, but the eating of the A F I K O M E N after the meal is one of the most fascinating customs. The seated contains fifteen separate steps or stages in the a F I K O M E N comes during the twelfth step, which is called the which is called Tazafun the Hebrew root word Tazafun T Z A F U N means hidden or concealed, which accurately conveys the uncertain and particular origin of the ritual. Early in the seated, the leader lifts up the three pieces of matzah, removes the middle piece, and breaks it in half. He then takes the large, larger half of the unbroken matzah and sets it aside until later in the ceremony. The broken piece of matzah is the A F I K O M E N. In some Traditions: The children in the home attempt to steal the F A F I K O M E N during the meal. With, while in other traditions, the leader hides the A F I K O M E N from the children, who then search search for it. In both traditions, the leader attempts to redeem the A F I K O M E N from the children often exchanged in a small gift. Surprisingly, A-F-I-K-O-M-E-N is not Hebrew, but a Greek word, the precise meaning of which is difficult to determine. Some have proposed the, uh, the D-E-R-I-V-A-T-I-O-N of this word from the Greek, Greek verb Meaning, I have come. The writer of Hebrews quotes Psalm 40 in the passage, in the following passage. Then I said, Behold, I have come. In the volume of the book, it is written of me, to do your will, O God. Precisely saying, sacrifice and offering, burnt offerings and offerings of your sin. You did not desire nor had pleasure in them, which are often according to the law. Then he said, Behold, I have come to do your will. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 7 through 9. Despite the Messianic, M E S S I A, and I C emphasis of the reading, it does not seem likely this is the meaning of. A F I K O M E N. Others suggest that the word A F I K O M E N originates from an ancient Greek tradition known as E P I K O M I O N. In this tradition, the ancient Greeks partic participated in pagan after dinner festivals by traveling from one party to another. So the rabbis named this piece of masa. A F I K O M E N to show the how the Jewish community must not imitate the pagan parties in their celebration. Rather than continuous evening of the fe of festival, the Jewish people must approach the Passover meal with reserve reverence. R E V E R E N C E. Behold the 
destruction of the temple, the Jewish community concluded the Passover meal with the eating of a small, olive-sized piece of lamb. This ritual emphasized the most emphasized the importance of the Pesach, P E S A C H sacrifice. Today, the A F I K O M E N represents the sacrifice, and Jewish people concluded the Passover meal with the eating of a small piece of the A F I K O M E N. When Jesus celebrated his last Passover with his disciples, he gave them matzah as the symbol of his body. The matzah is unloving, stripped in peers, just as the prophet Isaiah described the Messiah. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our inequalities. The Chastisement, C H A S T I S E M E N T, for our peace was upon him. By his stripes we were healed. Isaiah 53, verse 5. Prior to the meal, the masa was broken, wrapped in linen, and hidden away. Following the dinner, the masa reappears for the Messiah. Oh, not the Messiah. M E S S I A N I C Jewish community. The A F I K O M E N symbolizes it represents the Messiah as Jesus' body was broken, wrapped in linen, buried, buried, and risen on the third day. It is interesting that the eating of the A F I K O M E N occurs during the Tzazen fun, T Z A F U N, which means sitting or concealed. Although the A F I K O M E N provides a remarkable symbol of Jesus, the Jewish Messiah, many Jew Jewish people have not yet discovered him. The Messiah thus remained hidden from much of the Jewish community. Chapter 7 why we eat horseradish at Passover. <laughs> Chapter 7 is only two pages. Every year, Jewish people gather in family dining rooms around the world to celebrate the Passover Seder and remember God's redemption of Israel from slavery in Egypt. The Seder is designed to involve all five senses in the retelling of Exodus story to the next generation. As we celebrate, we imagine that we were once two slaves of Pharaoh and Egypt because if the eternal God had not brought our forefathers out from Egypt, then even we, our children and our children's children, might still have been enslaved to Pharaoh and Egypt from the traditional Passover service. We tell our children the story of our deliverance from Egypt so that they can remember the uh, S-E-V-E-R-I-T-Y of our people's slavery and the wonder of redemption according to Rabbi G-A-M-A-L-I-E-L who tutored the Apostle Paul when he was a student. Any father who, father who has not yet taught his children about the Passover lamb, the unloving bread, or bitter herbs, typically horseradish, has not fulfilled his duty. Horseradish was used as garnish completely overpowers the senses when we, when you eat it on a small piece of matzah. According to Jewish tradition, one must eat enough bitter herbs, maha, M A R O R in Hebrew to bring tears to the eyes. The tears and the bitter herbs remind people, remind each cedar participant how the great effect, affliction the Jewish people endured and brought tears to their eyes. If we fail to remember the bitterness of our, of our slavery in Egypt, 
we, we might be tempted to return to the source of ins our enslavement. Shortly after the Israelites left Egypt, they began to romanticize their affection and complain to Moses about their previous lack of food. Exodus 16 verses 1 through 3. Even though their rations in Egypt were moderate, they rem remember but that remember they remembered that we sat by the pots of meat and ate bread to the full. Exodus 16 verse 3. Their brief adversity in the desert caused them to forget their suffering in Egypt. Exodus chapter 3 verse 7 through 9 and chapter 4 verse 31. Not to mention the abundance of plunder they received as a result of their deliverance. Exodus chapter 12 verses 32 through 38. This is why it is vital to recall the anguish we endured under Pharaoh during the Passover season. If our ancestors who had personally experienced the bitterness of slavery in Egypt were so, so apart, APT, to forget the goodness of their redemption. How much more do we need, need do we tend to overlook the great disparity between our previ previous anguish and our present deliverance? In the same way, if we don't remember the bitterness of our enslavement to sin, we will not appreciate the wonder of our redemption, which Y-E-S-H-U-A, the Messiah, provided through his death and redemption. This is why Paul instructs the Ephesians, Ephesian church to remember how they were previously aligned L I E N A T E D from the conference of promise and without the hope of God in a desolated world. Ephesians 2 verses 11 through 12. By suffering symbolizing through the consumption of horseradish, we remember the bitterness of our slavery and recall the joy of our redemption. And I will be um, putting the Bible verses, like the book, and the um, chapter and verse. I'm not reading out of the Bible. And if you want to look it up, you can. Chapter 8. Fruit, first fruits of the resurrection. The Apostle Paul writes that Yesha, Yesha's Y E S H U A apostrophe as re, re, resurrection, which we celebrate at Easter, is the most significant event in history for believers. First Corinthians fifteen. As our faith would be meaningless without it. First Corinthians chapter fifteen verse fourteen. Jesus said that Jesus' resurrection represents the fruit first fruits. Of those who have already died. First Corinthians chapter fifteen twenty verses twenty to twenty three. Paul intentionally chose the word first fruit as an allusion allusion to the Jewish holiday holiday by the same name. God commanded the nation of Israel to offer the first fruits of their Harvest to him on the first day following the Sabbath of Passover. Leviticus chapter 23, verse 9 through 14. When God commanded the nation of Israel to offer the first fruits of their harvest, he was asking the nation to make a sacrifice of faith. If God already provided the nation a bountiful internal Harvest, then the nation could expect an even more bountiful harvest in the coming month. In the same way, Jesus' Jesus' resurrection gives us hope that we too will experience the resurrection in the future. For us, the believers, the
the resurrection is not simply a historic event, but also a for foretaste of what is to come in the future when God gives us new re redeemed bodies. In this book, um, Passover, a time to for redemption. They also have the um verses in some of the Bible passages. I will be reading the passages out of here, not of the Bible. We hope in this booklet has informed and enlightened and inspired you the deliverance of God's chosen people from the bondage of slavery in Egypt and ultimately the deliverance of all humanity from the bondage of sin and death is the heart of the Passover celebration. Passover is a powerful foreshadowing of our Messiah's sacrifice, sacrificial death, burial, and resurrection. And Moses said to the people, Remember this day in which you went out of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. For by strength of hand the Lord brought you out of this place. Exodus 13 verse 3 Therefore purge out the old leaven that you may be a new lump, since you truly are unleavened, for indeed Christ our Passover was sacrificed for us. 1 Corinthians 5 verse 7 He will be a descendant of Abraham. Genesis 12 verses 1 through 3 the Lord had said to Abe, Leave your country, your people, and your father's household, and go to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, I will, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing, and I, I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. He will bless be from the tribe of Judah. Genesis 4, 49, chapter 49, verse 10. The scepter will not depart from Judah, nor the ruler's staff from beneath his feet, until he comes to whom it belongs, and the obedience of, his, of the nation is his. He will be from the house of David. Second Samuel, chapter 7, verses 12 through 13. When your days are over, and you rest with your fathers, I will raise up your offering offspring to succeed you, who will come from your own body, and I will establish his kingdom. He is the one who will build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. He will be born of a virgin, of a virgin. Isaiah seven. Verse chap verse fourteen. Therefore, the Lord Himself will give you a son. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and you will call him Emmanuel, God with us. He will be born in Bethlehem. Micah five. Verse two. But you, Bethlehem. E E P H R A T A H. Although you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from the old, or from of old, from ancient times. He will be God Himself. Isaiah nine verse verses six through seven. For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. He will be a prophet like Moses. Deuteronomy chapter 18 verse 15. The Lord your God will rise up for you a prophet like me from among your own brothers. You must listen to him. He will come humbly. Zechariah 9 verse 9 Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, daughter of 
Jerusalem, see your king comes to you, righteousness in heaven, salvation gently, and ride on a donkey, on a colt, the fall of a donkey. He will be crucified. Psalms, Psalm 22, verse 16 through 18. For dogs have surrounded me, the congregation of the wicked has enclosed, enclosed me. They repaired my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. They look and stare at me. They divide my garments among them. And for my clothing they cast lots. He was be a surf, suffering servant. Isaiah 53 verses 5 through 6. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was trans, transgression. He was Bruised for our in, in, in qualities. I N I Q U I T E S. The C H A S T I S E M E N T of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we were healed. All we, all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him. The inequality of us all. Israel will mourn for him. Zechariah 12, chapter 12, verse 10. And I will pour out on the house of David in the in he I N H A B I T A N T S of Jerusalem a spirit of grace and supple supplication they will look on me the one they have pierced and they will mourn for him as one mourns for an only child and grieve bitterly for him as one grieves for for firstborn son there is no person in all of record history who fits these descriptions more perfectly than y e s h u a jesus And that is it for Passover, a time for redemption. I hope you enjoyed going the eight days with me. I know I did videos one and two by themselves, and then chapters one and two by themselves, then three through five together, and six to eight together. I hope everyone has a great Passover. And a great Easter. Enjoy your day. Spend it together with loved ones. And don't fight. <laughs>